everybody, here we are back again in my workshop. My name's Colin Way, and we're bringing the Skills Centre to your home. Now, behind the camera, as usual, is Charlie. Um, his brother is uh, Finley, it's his birthday today, so he's um, inside um, eating cake. Um, so me and Charlie are gonna bring the video for you uh, today. Now, um, this is still, uh, it's a technical day out of the two days this week. Um, if you remember, we said about doing a two, um, uh, a two session project that's going to be for next week now and I'm going to tell you all about that um, at the end of this video just so you can get your timber prepped and ready so we can build that one together next week next Tuesday and Thursday um, but a little bit of technical stuff today so we're going to look at the eccentric spiraling chuck and this is just carrying on from the questions that we were asked um, on Tuesday so eccentric spiraling chuck we're going to look at how that works and just um, just show you some of the um, some of the things you can do with it um, and then there's been an awful lot of questions about one simple device we've been using an awful lot um, and that's this sanding disc sorry sanding table um, I've have explained before that we don't sell this part anymore but we sell an even better alternative so we're going to look at that we're going to build a sanding table build the sanding disc look at how you can get it working so you can do exactly the same back in your own lathe and then just makes the lathe work for you a little bit more so that'll be in a second. Let's start off with the um, eccentric spiraling chuck though. Um, so this is the device. I've done a little bit of prep um, on the actual bit of kit, i.e. mounted a bit of timber. I've roughed down a bit of timber, trued up one side, mounted it onto the eccentric spiraling chuck. Now I'm gonna take it apart um, for you just to, to show you what it's all about. Um, there's three parts to the chuck itself. Um, and it's a, the way it's fixed to your regular chuck, now this is going to be using our C jaws, the C jaws for the Evolution chuck. Um, and I, here I'm using the SK114. Um, but if you look at the back of it, you can see the um, dovetail here. Now that dovetail sits to the outside of the C jaws, um, just locates on and you expand those jaws onto it. So it's quite a nice easy fixing. You don't have to mess around with taking the chuck off, um, putting it back on again, that sort of thing. Uh, but if we look at the back part, three parts, like I said, you've got the main um, top section. This is where you screw the, um, the, the, the blank onto. In fact, Charlie, just come in a bit closer. Let's just get a proper look at this. Um, so the three parts, this top section. Now this bit rotates, but if you only rotate your work, nothing's gonna happen. There is gonna be no, um, no oscillation, no eccentricity there. Um, so that has to work in conjunction with the hinge mechanism. The hinge mechanism is between these two. So if we look at the back here, you can see the hinge and then the amount of, of index positions that we can move it to. So we've got two actions here. If I move this back and forward and do a bit of turning, you'll end up um, with, if, let's say a stack of pennies. That's the easiest way to equate, I would have thought. Stack of pennies, just that stack of pennies just going from one position to the next position to the next one and so on. And that'll just go back and forward, back and forward, the more times you hinge it. If Every time you hinge a position, you also rotate it. That's where you get the spirograph effect or the, um, the spiral staircase effect with your stack of pennies. So work the two in conjunction with each other. You can get many different effects. I'm going to do a very brief demonstration here because it will take a, a long time to do a full one. Um, probably a good hour, if not more. So we're going to get, make sure that you understand this before I leave. So we start, um, or I started by um, having this running completely round, skim that surface. Um, what I will do whilst it's round though is just, just with a pencil, just strike a centre point. Now I think, Charlie, what's going to be best here, um, let's have the view coming this way so everyone can see this face here. Uh, tell me if that light starts to do funny things to the camera. So I'm just going to just very gently just put a strike a pencil line. There we are. Good luck with that. So just a little pencil mark in the middle. Okay. Now I'm going to try and do as much of this on camera as possible. Charlie's going to tell me off when I'm straying outside of the camera shot. Okay. So see, Joss just comes off. And so we're gonna, what we're gonna do to start with is just move the hinge one point. Am I all good if I work there, Charlie? Yeah, I keep in that zone. 
So what I'm going to do, just slacken off the hinge screw and then we're going to undo this one and move it to the next position. So slacken off and then undo. A long, I've, in my workshop I don't have any long ones of these bar, just the one big one and that's for the back. But the a longer one of those would be a, a good asset here. Um, because I'm going to start striking that, so I'm sort of going to be a little bit fingers and thumbs to start with. But you're going to get the idea. Once you've slackened it off, then you can get your fingers in there and under it properly. Like I say, the, the hinge screw, that's already um, loosened. And now we're just going to move it to the next position. Where am I? There we are. Next position. And just to give you the idea of, of what the effect is, let's... Let's just do the one to start with. There we go. And now, one other thing I would warn you about here is don't just go and turn the lathe back on at the speed you left it. Because what we're doing now is throwing that piece of timber off centre. And so you're going to get a bit of a wobble on. At the moment, it's only a little one. But when you get to the extreme of that hinge movement, you get a, a huge amount of movement there. So you have to be fairly careful that you don't start making that lathe run around the room. Always check by turning the lathe by hand that nothing's going to touch the tool rest. Now, if I use a set of calipers, oh, sorry, dividers, and we'll just make a mark, let's go for, I'm not measuring this, I guess that's going to be about, it's going to be about 30 mil there. So I can see, once I start running, I can see the centre of that spinning piece of timber. It's not true centre, remember, because we're eccentric. If I just scribe a line there, you can see how far off of center point, off of true center we are, we're, we're miles away. So now, next move. And this is entirely up to you. You can keep going with the hinge or you can start rotating as well. Because of course, once you've got to that big extreme, once you've come out to one of these, you can simply rotate that and you'll find that that circle will move around a little bit each time. If, you, if we work off a clock face, it'll go from one o'clock to two o'clock to three o'clock and four, creating a circle each time. So you can quite easily see where that spiraling effect comes from. That's what I'm gonna do now, just to show you. Let's just go, let's just pivot. Now here you have, where's my mark? There we are. On the outside, you have a nice centering line there and we've got index positions here. So I'm gonna move it, advance it on one and we'll show you where that sends your mark. And don't forget which way you're traveling. So let's say, there's my mark at the moment. So I'm gonna go anti-clockwise and that'll click back in again. And then we can screw that one back up. We'll do another mark. Remember, I've only hinged that one position. So, I've only hinged that one position and already you can see how much we've shifted that, um, that circle. So let's go again, we'll do another one. So we'll do another two of these just to give you an idea of where we're going with it. And so we're going to bounce around again. Where's my mark? There it is. Another anti-clockwise click. And it'll sit back down in that, that gap there. Screwing back in. You've got to get, it's almost getting into a rhythm with this. But if you got into the rhythm, it all goes nice and quickly. Next one, great for boxes. If you have a look on our website, um, there's a box with on there made by Jason, Jason Breach. Um, shows this so well. I mean, I think it was a, um, a rosewood box and he's um, highlighted those marks with um, a gold paste 
um, and it really does look the business. So right, now you can see, look, they're starting to spirograph, um, and it isn't many of those to do before you get that real um, pattern sort of creeping out. One more we'll do, and then we're gonna move on. I might just do a couple of turnings with it in place as well. So there we are, pop that round, clicking back in. Give it a good tighten up. You don't want this to vibrate in any way. Um, it doesn't give you a nice crisp line. There we are. One more. And then we're just going to do a little bit of turning with it. And there we are. So you can see the movement we're getting. So the effects are quite... I want to say that the effects are, are easy to produce. They are, but it takes a lot of thought to get something that you want. You need to play with this um, this this chuck for quite a while to understand exactly, right, if I move it there, this happens. Um, a lot of the time I make patterns on box lids and things like that, and I just like to experiment to see what comes up. Maybe skip every other position or something like that. Um, and but this is if you think about this is 2d so this is like your spirograph like I say you can see if I carry on doing this we're going to get those lovely swirls coming around and it'll end up um, creating their own curves and arcs in all sorts of um, different areas um, let's just do a little bit of turning on the outside now so we'll do that stack of pennies look now to do that if we do the first one let's move the hinge actually so if I move the hinge a couple of places to get a good good start. Right. I think we'll go out just maybe two more positions. And then I can keep that in place. So turn them over, so there's my middle, so one, two. Let's go, yeah, let's go there. So I've missed, from the centre point, I've come another two positions out. hinge anymore I'm going to keep the hinge there we're going to do a little spiral staircase again we'll just do three or four movements give you an idea and I'll just use a parting tool my simplest form literally stack of pennies let's go with a short tool rest tool rests are on the agenda today everybody we're going to look at the evolution tool rest system okay there we are that's good so lay speed to zero because I've come out quite a way there. Um, locate where am I? Where I started. That's good. Let's just see how far I can go. So I'm at a thousand revs there. I don't. I don't think it's going to want me to go much further. Starting to get a little bit shaky. So I'm just taking it down. Nine hundred and thirty revs I've got there. That doesn't mean to say that's going to work for you. You might need to just um, make it slower. You might get away with a bit, a little bit more. But like I always do, down to zero, um, and turn that laser speed up nice and gentle. Um, and I'm just going to go with a, a little one eighth parting tool, regular parting tool. And let's just do one simple cut now. Let's do. I'm going to guess these these uh, measurements. So I'm going to go to about 30 mil. Nice straight cut. Once you get past the unevenness down the solid timber, then you're all good again. There we are. Let's just stop at that. Let's just. I'll take a set of calipers to that. Actually, let's. We'll try and keep the the discs the same. So there's my first disc. Let's see. That's about 25, 30 nearly. Then we'll take the chuck off. 
We'll pivot in once. And I'll go, I'll keep it, I'll keep everything the same. I'll go anti-clockwise again. Move on to the next position. Do the same size. Oh, a bit there. Do the same size um, little coin. There we go. And remember, once you get past the unevenness, it goes nice and smooth. And there we go, nice and clean. And we'll do one more. You can see what's happening, so I'm shifting. My coin is moving over. I think we'll do one more you'll get to see this is a it can be quite a boring demonstration if we carry on for too long um, and I'm absolutely aware of that so last one I know whether it's becoming boring I just have to look into Charlie's eyes see if they're glazing over right okay Last one. Okay, so you can see what's happening there. Look, so we're getting that little stack of pennies um, not only moving outwards but rotating around as well that's because we've already hinged this bottom plate out and now we're just turning this each segment at a time so we get one two three and you'll keep going around so if you've got a stem of a goblet or something like that for instance you could get that effect going down the stems it's quite a nice way to work all right just checking with Charlie to make sure we have no questions yet there we go right I think we're going to leave that there. That gives you an idea of how it works. It's down to you to make the projects and create things. Stack of pennies or the 2D as a 2D version as either a box decoration, that sort of stuff, or your 3D sort of work where you're doing stems of things. Or even the thing about finials of boxes and that sort of stuff where you can not do a stack of pennies, you can do a curve cuts, all those sorts of things. There's so many different ways of using that piece. Cool, right. Back to me in a, a, a minute then, Charlie. Okay, so the question we've had an awful lot over the past few weeks, not just on Q&A sessions, but um, we, when we were doing the smokers, um, in, a, in a, lot of the pro, a lot of the projects, I've been using a couple bits of kit that I just take for granted. They're in my workshop all the time. I use them pretty much every week. Um, and this, this is one of the main ones. This is um, a sanding table that as Axiomist Tools, um, as we work for Axiomist Tools, we used to sell them. We're gonna look at the alternative that we're doing now, which we actually make in Axiomist, so made in the UK. Do you know the part number? Yeah, I've got all the information. I've done my homework this time, everyone, so we'll be okay for that. And I also prompted up the other guys at Axman, so they're going to put the links onto, uh, onto the feed as well. So I've got the part numbers. So uh, let's start, we'll start with the platform, and then we'll move on to making the sanding disc itself, look at the Velcro and all those sorts of things, all right? I think for the first thing. For the first thing? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, no, but Charlie is about to look um, look for the part number in the catalogue. It's in the wood turning page, it's called Eccentric Spiralling Chuck. It's 9000, I think it's 900093. 
which is really sad of me to know that off the top of my head. But just double check that. Um, right at the back in the green section of the catalogue, Charlie. Right then, so my equivalent. Can they see the bent, the top of the lathe, Charlie? This I want to show people stuff down here. All right, and nice and close. They can see everything. We're just getting to that part number, everybody. Of the eccentric spiral chuck. Okay, so what we've got, so that's my old sanding table. Our equivalent now works off of the Evolution tool rest system. So what we need to get to make this is by the tool post to suit your lathe. Now, it happens my lathe is an inch, so I've got the tool post to suit an inch. Okay, so there's the tool post. Part numbers should be coming, but if you want part numbers, that for me, I oh know I'm not going to confuse you with part numbers. Look on the website because there's all sorts of stem sizes. The next bit, you will need to know this part number though. So this is known as a 75 millimeter carving plate for the Evolution Tool Post system. Part number is 104451. That's what comes out of the packet. Okay, so we've got the actual plate itself, which we're going to mount onto the bottom of my piece of pre-cut material here, and I'll talk to you about that also. You've got your tool rest system, that's going to screw onto that, that's going to hold it in place, okay? I'm not going to do it yet, because I'm going to fix it onto my base that I've made. So that's what we need to create our sanding table. However, let me just talk to you about what the tool rest system is all about. That's the stem. The stem then, I feel like I'm on a QVC channel or something the way I'm talking now, I don't mean to be like that, sorry. Um, the stem comes with, or not comes with, the stem then allows you to be able to fix other things. So I'm just going to get a few of them out of the packets. Okay, so that's short tool rest. Looks to be about 100 mil. And I've only I've only selected a few of these. There's many others that I haven't brought to the workshop today. Um, but I just thought maybe a good selection just to give you an idea what you can get in in one of these um, tool rest systems, um, if you're thinking of getting different size tool rests, it solves a lot of problems. Um, and this is quite a nice one that I'm about to get now. So this is an S um, tool rest for for bowl turning. If you would prefer to get as close as you can to the inside of your bowl, so you imagine that in your tool post, the inside of your bowl, and you've got that going on into the inside of the bowl. Can people see what I'm doing? All right, so imagine that on the inside of your bowl when you're turning, you've got two sides there, okay? So that's an S-shaped tool, uh, tool rest, just for bowl turning. So yeah, that's, that's the sort of stuff that's available and will fit in um, to that tool post. Charlie's there with the part number? 90093. Oh, I was right. 90093 is the eccentric spiraling chuck, everybody. Okay, so back to where we are here. So tool post, tool rests what we're about to make, the sanding table. So using the carving platform. This piece of material here is the same piece that I'm gonna use in a minute to make the sanding disc. And it's a piece of MDF, medium density fiber board, um, with this is a bit of melamine on top here. I'm gonna use the melamine on the sanding disc, really because it's dead hard. Um, and it's gonna keep that sanding disc nice and flat for me as well. Well, I'll look at that in a minute, but that's what we're using. I just had a, um, a bit of scrap in the workshop, um, and I've just used a bandsaw to cut that square. So I had two square edges, two faces, and the, my square faces are this one and this one. Sorry, this one and this one. So what we'll do, that's going to be the top because it's nice and slippery. Um, we're just going to plant that on there somewhere. It doesn't really matter where. Um, and I'm just going to drill a couple of holes ready for my, not all the way through, a couple of holes just ready um, to screw in. And we'll go to the, the outer holes. You can put in as many as you want. I, I tend to do this with, um, with MDF just so it doesn't strip the screws out too quickly. Um, I'm not, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a fan of MDF. I'll pref I would much prefer to use a good quality plywood for this, but this was the only scrap I could find today. Um, 
And if we go to some screws, I want to make sure that I'm not going to go all the way through that. So I'm going to use for this piece I've got also 25 mil screws here, but they're a good, they're 4.5, so they're, they're quite chunky. Don't want to strip the thread, so I've got my torque working on my drill. Now, one thing I haven't done, you've probably spotted it. It's a, it's a, I wanted to say it's a deliberate mistake, but it's not. It's me rushing. I haven't put that screw in yet. Um, let's get, let's pretend that I've done that. Basically, that screw screws in the top and stops that unthreading. Can you see that, Charlie? <laughs> let's take that off. Let's do it properly, everybody. Let's do it properly. I know what will happen. I'll say I'll do that once I've turned the cameras off and I'll never get to it and I'll, I'll lose the screw. So, screw that one in. All right, and then our little counter sink can go in the top. And then I'll get a little Allen key. Move that on. And then we can screw him back in. If you intend to use the same um, tool post though for many different ones, now I probably, I probably bypass that screw because otherwise you'll have to unscrew it from the MDF each time. As long as you do that up nice and tight. There we go. Right there, everyone. There is your sanding table. Of course, it's not just used as a sanding table. That the main purpose or the original purpose for this. Um, plate here was for carving so a piece of carving say for instance you've done a bowl um, uh, or you've got a piece of carving you want to hold it firmly screw it to that and then that can be um, put in your um, uh, the banjo of your lathe and you've got a, a carving clamp you know so your lathe at the moment is being used for so many different jobs carving clamp sanding disc you know as well as its main job of turning so that's your sanding table made so there's my equivalent to what I've been using for these past few weeks. The beauty of this though is that you can take that stem off and you can use it with all the other tool rests out there. All right, and like I say, I've just had it just grabbed a selection from, from accidents or from work um, to use. Um, um, so, sorry, yes, sorry, it's been off now. It's been off now, well, good. We're gonna have a, not gonna be too long tonight today, Charlie. Now, one other thing. We're not gonna overrun, what like we have been doing. So the other thing, center point. So if you want to sound center point, which makes sense, what we can also do, this is a new thing from Axminster, okay? And it's something that we worked on for a, for a fair while. Um, the tool post collars. So if you want to say, for instance, if you're learning and you want to get the tool post or tool rest of the same height each time, great little device here. Um, but on our sanding table, this is a means to get that sanding table to center point each time. Fits on the tool post. And what we're gonna do 
is pop that on the tool post look, put that to center point, which is there. Do the little grub screw up. That locks in position. And then every time you put that tool post back in the lathe, it fits back to your center point each time. That in itself is a lovely little gadget just to have in the workshop for doing things like that. Beautiful little bit of kit. You might also know if you're going to look on the uh, website at those sorts of things. Um, again, something inspired and, and, um, and brought to us by Chris Fisher, the blind wood turner, are the um, collar ends for the same system. So to stop the tool falling off, to give you an idea of where the end of the tool rest is. Um, obviously for him, for his turning, it's invaluable. Um, but again, they can be really, really useful, especially if you're learning to turn. Um, it's just one other thing that, that just that helps you, a turner's aid, for instance. But there we are, I've got a new tool rest now. Um, a new sanding table. This surface is really cool. It's really nice and uh, nice and shiny and uh, slippery. Um, but we need to have something to sand on to. So let's have a look at our next bit of kit, the sanding disc. Charlie, would you grab that sanding disc from over there? So again, guys, over the past few weeks, we've been looking at different sanding discs, big ones, medium sized ones, small ones. Okay, most of them, so this was a little nylon one that I can put in a suitcase and go over wherever I want to. Okay, it doesn't affect anybody or anything. It's got a Velcro system on. Again, little faceplate ring, MDF, oh, sorry, um, ply with this one, shaped back, again, Velcro. And then the big, the big one, faceplate on the back, Velcro system. We're going to do one of those. I would make your, absolutely make your um, sanding discs fit, or make them to the size of sanding or abrasive discs that you can buy, that without fail. Um, it doesn't matter about the Velcro. You can buy Velcro or hooked um, uh, discs, or do what I've done, and I'm going to show you in a minute exactly how this works. Buy a um, a meter length. I went into work this morning and I grabbed a meter length of this Velcro um, hook. Okay, it's self adhesive, so we're gonna, once we turn this to the right size, we're then gonna put this on and cut this round. So you can just make strips of that. It's beautiful, really well. You use it on so many things. This size, you can make your small three inch disc, two inch disc, whatever. It's great stuff. Part number on that one, guys, and I think my, my guys at the office are gonna put the numbers up for me, but this one is 810350. It's a meter long length of that hook material. Okay, I do have a nine inch disc here already. Okay, nine inch disc, a little bit shavings all over, but the um, the loop on the back. Okay, this is 80 grit as you can see there. So we're gonna make another disc. Okay, so I want, this is my surface. This is gonna make a great face for that, um, that hook and loop, and it's gonna give us a nice hard surface for the abrasive. So that's gonna be the back. On, I haven't got, a center point on there, so we need to find it. Let's find where our center is. So I'm going to grab one of my discs from over here. Well, that's an eight inch, so we can get that to suit as close as possible. Center. I'm going to do a little bit of turning of it anyway because it's it's rough cut at the moment on the bandsaw, so I, I want a nice. Um, even outer edge, so I don't want that. So let's now position my faceplate ring. Checking the screws don't go all the way through. This is a great day for being in the workshop. I don't know what it's like where you are, guys, but it's absolutely torrential here at the moment. So I couldn't think of a better place to be.
So I'm letting the ratchet of the driver just tell me when we've gone far enough. And if I think we need to go a little bit firmer, we can click up one or two spots on the ratchet. I'm gonna put all, all the screws in. There's no reason why I don't, why I don't have to. Uh, may as well do a good job of it. There we go. So they're straight onto my chuck. These faceplate rings are so um, valuable to me. I use so many of the things for different reasons, whether it's doing things like this or doing push plates, you know. Um, I use an awful lot of them. So let's shape this. So we want to go to um, nine inches. I'm just going to double check the disc because I want the disc to come right to the edge. See, at the moment, I've got a couple of mil there, a spare. So we're just going to do a little bit of turning. I don't want to do too much. We're going to have a dust extractor on. Well, I can do that, Charlie, it's fine. Um, in fact, let's come to this side. Yeah, we want the dust extractor on. This is horrible stuff. I'm going to put my full face visor on and Charlie's going to go to the back of the room just for the moment and let that dust extractor do its work. Um, you know, MDF is dangerous, but I'm only taking a few extra precautions here only because the dust is so airborne. Um, timber dust is, you know, it's equally as dangerous. Don't think that, um, you know, I'm treating this as a more harmful substance. Uh, it is all really, really bad for us. I'm only making these extra um, precautions because it's a very, um, when I say an airborne, it's a very uh, light dust and it will, it will go further into the air before it gets sucked away. So let me get that extractor on. So we're going to go silent for a while. <laughs> You're not going to hear me very much because I've got the dust extractor on plus I've got my visor on. But what I'm going to do is trim to size and then I'm going to shape the back. Um, you'll see exactly what I mean. guys so you can see what I've done there sorry we had to go quiet for a little bit I just wanted to take all the right precautions while you could see very apparently what was happening with that dust as it came off like I say very light very flowery um, so everyone quite quickly but that what I've done there is just tapered the back so now you can sand around things when you're using this sanding disc it does turn very easily it just comes away so quick but there nice flat surface let's pop on 
our Velcro. Um, where do you get the Velcro from? So I get it from, from Axminster. Um, we do this, as like I said, in these lengths. Um, part number from us is um, 810350, and that's the meter length. Uh, alternatively, you can buy this in um, discs. I, I use this really because it's a little bit, you know, you think that it's, um, I can use all the scrap ends on other things and you can dictate the size that you're making really. Uh, and thumbs. Um, on the website, uh, we did notice something this morning when I went to grab this. On the website, it's actually down as. Um, is that going to do halfway? It's down as a a red Velcro. Actually, it's not a red Velcro. It's this colour. It's black. It's never been red that I know of. So don't think you're buying the wrong thing. If it looks red on the website, it's actually black. Don't want to overlap, and if it overlaps, you're going to get that ridge line, and of course that's going to cause you problems. Then when it comes to comes to sanding, you're going to have little lumps and bumps. Right there we are. Now I reckon I'll be able to get that bit from the other side there. So let's just cut that off and turn them over. Certainly sticky enough. I don't really want that to fall on the floor just yet and get covered in shavings because we're going to turn that around. Um, where do you get your scissors from? Little tool shop called Axminster Tools. <laughs> I live in a little Axminster bubble, you see. So my tools, I have no need to look any further. Um, these are my Axminster pair that I've had probably about five, six years now. Um, and they live in the workshop. Dash with this, just speed this up a little bit. Got 15 minutes left. Thank you, man. There we go, we have a nice new running disc. Like I say, you can keep hold of these pieces because you've got another either a 75 or 50 mil disc in there you could use, and, and the same here. Um, so keep hold of those. I'll find them. Let's pop them back on their back in a minute. I don't see waste. We'll definitely use that later. And I've still got a load of you know stuff left over from that meter roll. So there, there's our disc. So now, of course, all we need to do. Uh, 
at our new shiny disc. To our new sanding table. Hopefully, that would have answered some of your questions that we've been getting through the last few weeks. Okay, so all of the part numbers for that are going to be put up. If they haven't been put up already, they're going to be put up on um, this feed. Um, so you'll be able to find out. So if you remember, we use the carving table under here with the um, correct size stem for your lathe. We have the added little collar just so there's no adjusting each time to find your center point each time. Um, either MDF or plywood, use a good thickness. 25 mil was probably um, the minimum I would say go to. Um, and then the Velcro. So the Velcro stripping that I got, I got a, a 100 by a meter length. Um, again, part numbers are all going to be on there. Um, but it's the, probably the easiest method rather than finding discs. And discs, sanding discs comes in all sizes. Don't forget, it's not just machine discs, but you can get your power tool sanding discs as well. And most of them nowadays are on Velcro. Um, so there, I hope that uh, that's really helped. It's all mounted on the um, faceplate ring. Again, that then just simply um, attaches onto the chuck. If you go really big with your sanding discs, you might want to think about doing something like having a, uh, a longer um, chuck key. That will be a, a benefit to you as well. But uh, all that is literally faceplate ring on the back just for easy access. And your lathe is transformed again into a disc sander. Okay, so just back to me briefly. Then. So no turning, in, uh, no, well, not a lot of turning uh, in there, guys. But um, hopefully some useful um, tools for the workshop, for the turning workshop. I just want to go over what we're going to be doing next week, so you can prep up for that. Um, and you might want to make yourself a sander in the meantime. So. Again, rather than just pick blanks from my workshop, I've gone for specific blanks. I've used the Raider, the Axminster tools um, shelves, and I've got myself some pre-cut blanks. So I've got um, a 10 by 2 ash bowl blank, okay, a 6 by 2 ash bowl blank, and then I've just got one of the um, 12 by 3 by 3 ash. Um, squares and what I'd like to make next week this is it's just a pleasing little project really is one of the raised hazards or the raised bowls um, small base we're going to thin that down a little bit we'll have a, uh, a nice um, uh, uh, stem and then we'll have the, the actual bowl uh, raised on the top so I'll come up with some designs for that and um, we'll probably get to We'll probably get to do Tuesday and Thursday. We're going to throw in a few of the finishing techniques as well. Um, so yeah, that's going to be next week's project. So um, if you want to prep your timber, get your timber ready. We can make this up together. In the meantime, guys, have a fantastic weekend. Get making your sanding tables and, and disc sanders. Um, uh, enjoy your workshops, and I'll catch up with you same time on Tuesday, four o'clock, my workshop. Thank you.